Hi everybody. Welcome to this edition of Tech Talk with Dave. We are going to introduce an, an, a new radio system from uh, Telrad called the Breeze Air AXE. It's a uh, it's it's a point to point or point to multi point system. It um, uh, in testing in my lab, I uh, was quite impressed with the performance actually. And and um, anyways. Um, there's some features that uh, that I want to talk about directly in uh, in this system, and um, we'll go from there. So here's some of the highlights of it. The uh, same unit can be an access point. It can be a point-to-point -point master, or it can be a point-to-point -point slave or a subscriber module. Doesn't make any difference. They all look exactly the same. They look like this, and they have a a, a, a data connection, a PoE. Uh, ultimately, they're going to have a have a fiber connection to them, but at this moment, um, these test units that I have were, were CAT5 only. So capacity, about 2.1 gigabits per second. These, the AX in the title of the, of the uh, uh, equipment stands for 802.11ax or Wi-Fi 6. So these are running Wi-Fi 6 protocol. And, and uh, some of the, the, the features of Wi-Fi 6 um, dynamic asymmetric resource allocation. Um, link can be in service in about 30 seconds. Um, if you got your, uh, if you've done this once before, then you know exactly what what steps you need to do in order to make it to go. The unit is really energy efficient. Low power consumption, about 13 watts um, per end of the link. And by Telrad's uh, um, spec sheet. The range is about 100, greater than 130 kilometers, um, which is far. I did not have a chance to test it at any more than about uh, about uh, 15 meters across my office and basement. So, but it worked great. So they've got some secret sauce in in the unit itself. They have a uh, an innovative and proprietary, by their description, um, interference uh, rejection protocol that takes in and eliminates interference. And I can say that I think this works pretty good. TDMA scheduler ensures a collision-free operation. That's, uh, that's part of the Wi-Fi 6 protocol. ACM guarantees an error-free error link. That's uh, the modulation levels um, run up and down according to the link quality. It has, a, it has a very fast ARQ, minimum latency and jitter. Latency across my link, about three or four milliseconds. And these things, of course, are uh, time synchronized. So we avoid self-interference. So the equipment arrived. I was excited to see it come. The, uh, the uh, box that it shipped to uh, two Breeze Access, or Breeze Air Axe units were included. AXE units were included. They've got integrated antennas, as you can see here. The antennas all part of the, uh, the device itself. There was a cable gland. Uh, which is in the, the, the box with the uh, mounting clamp for a vertical pipe. And uh, my lab set up at first included mounting both units on speaker stands placed about 15 feet apart. And you can see pictures there of, uh, of how I uh, turned them up. All right, so my test setup, very simple. Out of my, uh, my core router into uh, the master unit, uh, cross the RF link to the uh, the slave unit, um, ran them in point to point uh, mode at first, and then into uh, into a laptop. And uh, my test setup units approximately five meters apart. I had 62 dB of path loss between the units. I set my transmit power to plus one dBm. My RSSI measured at the other end of the link was neg 33, and of course the link being in point to point mode was symmetrical. So I did the same thing on both ends, and uh, away we went. When the units arrived, they were both configured as subscriber units. Logging into the GUI uh, using the default IP address um, it, it was uh, easy. I changed the configuration on one unit to be a master unit and the second one as a subscriber unit. And then the only other step to make them join each other is to, is to correct the MAC addresses so that you're talking to the unit in the opposite. On the master unit, you list the MAC addresses of all the subscriber units that you've got connected to it. On the subscriber unit, you list the MAC address of the, of the master unit. Simple as that. 
And then I set the operating frequency, the bandwidth, and the transmit power in the master unit. I set the, uh, the subscriber unit to scan all channels, and I enabled automatic transmit power control in the subscriber unit radio. So all of this falls well within a couple of minutes of uh, perusing the manual and uh, turning it up. <coughs> so I configured my network. I set my uh, IPs to uh, this particular subnet that I needed to speak to my router and uh, I did not use VLANs initially. Um, the, this particular router did not have IP version 6 available on the, the downstream leg of the router, so I could not test uh, in this mode, I could not test IP version 6, but ultimately I did. And, uh, and uh, I do not have a syslog server that was up and running, and I don't have an SMP server that's up and running, but if I did, I would just simply fill in the blanks for uh, the, the, the IP addresses, the passwords, and uh, away I go. Um, with, uh, with SNMP management and uh, collecting the, the logs of uh, the device. So the links came up, no trouble. In the GUI, uh, I can see um, the, uh, this end of the unit, uh, I can see the opposite end of the unit, I can see what the, uh, what the downlink throughput uh, ultimately is, I can see what the uplink throughput is. These are six gigahertz units. And so um, I set the channel size to 160 megahertz and the frequency was to 6120. And uh, my aggregate link performance was about 1850 megabits per second over the air. And the actual link performance was limited to the gig, the, the one gig ethernet ports that I had on either side of it. So, so I was limited to about 920 or 940 in each direction of the device. But as you can see in the available throughput that I was, this link was capable of 1.7 gigabits in each direction. Pretty hot stuff for a, a light point to point like this. And the last step in a production network would be setting the, the passwords, the remote authentication IP. Uh, I would create a whitelist for who could actually uh, log into this device, perhaps. And, um, and uh, I would turn it loose in the, in the wild. And uh, there I am doing uh, the throughput that I need. I could reduce the throughput to, eight, to uh, 80 mega, megahertz and uh, my, my throughput generally cuts in half. So I was down to to about 900 aggregate and I reduced the uh, bandwidth. But being that th these run on I six gigahertz, um, the uh, spectrum is still pretty virgin, so I would not have any problem running these on 160 meg channels. So the Breeze Air AXE lives up to its reputation. In point-to-point uh, -point mode, about 1.8 gigahertz per second aggregate when you split 50-50, uh, uplink and downlink. Uh, can be deployed in point to multipoint mode also with uh, many SUs communicating to a single uh, master unit. And uh, connectorized versions, we could use this sector or horn type antennas for even more flexibility and uh, go from there. So Telrad tell me that the roadmap looks something like this that we're going to take an, and uh, get up to uh, 1024 qualm in a two by two mode, which is gonna push us over the two gigabits per second um, link speed. Um, ultimately, gonna be able to put four channels together. Or, yeah, use carrier aggregation for two channels and then four channels, ultimately. And that's gonna push, push this little system past four and eight gigabits per second. So, and whether we're, we're doing point to multipoint or point to point, um, we still have the, uh, the uh, same type of performance. Its previous version of equipment was the Breeze Air 8000, of which I had a, a test set in my lab also, um, and it would do uh, 300, mm, give or take, megabits uh, in proprietary protocol. This was before 802.11ax, and so um, in uh, my lab, this system, I ran it right beside another point to multipoint system using 80 megahertz of five gigahertz channel. And uh, both systems performed beautifully together. 
I knew the uh, point to multipoint system, the other system would perform. I was uh, concerned mounting the uh, antennas and that very close together for the subscriber units for the, uh, the uh, breeze air and uh, my issues did not materialize that I expected to. They, I still had the, all the throughput in the world. So this is um, a system that, that I'm recommending and if you want a light point to point, a light point to multipoint, um, this, is, uh, this is it. We've just recently, MBSI Wave and Wave LLC in the US have just recently become distributors for this equipment. So feel free to uh, inquire. And uh, as usual, any feedback or comments that you have on, on uh, this Tech Talk or any other Tech Talk, I welcome. Send your email to marketing at mbsiwave.com. And any new topic suggestions, uh, same thing. Send, send them to, uh, to me at marketing at mbsiwave.com. And who knows, maybe the next Tech Talk is going to be your suggested topic. Bye for now.